Hello. This is lecture number three in the book of Revelation. And we're going to do a study now on the seven seals of Revelation. You know, there's one thing that's been very helpful to me, and that is as I read the scripture, I see that it is the work of the Holy Spirit to convict and to convince of truth. So I know then that it is the Holy Spirit that does that work, and it is not mine to do. So I don't need to try to convict anyone or convince anyone that any particular view is right, because that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And so in looking at the seven seals, we need to understand that there are many views, especially today there are, is a proliferation of ideas regarding the seven seals. So I'm simply presenting to you what has been my privilege to find in Scripture, and uh, I am showing to you some of the things that I have found to be logical, sensible, and worthwhile. And so as we open the Bible to Revelation 6, where the seven seals are, we'll bow our heads and ask the Lord that this study may be profitable. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of truth. We know that uh, all disunity comes from uh, a lack of, uh, of truth, and we know that unity comes when truth is discovered. So we just ask, Father, that you will help us as we search, as we study, that we may find truth along the way. And as I present these concepts, I pray they may be to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> there have been many, many different views on the seals. Uh, for example, for many centuries, there were those who placed the seals, beginning them back with Adam. They had uh, placed them in a historical setting, they had thought of them as referring to seven periods of God's people through the history of the world. And they saw seal number one as the time in history from Adam to the flood, to Noah's flood. And they saw seal number two as coming from the time of the flood to the Tower of Babel and to Abraham. Then they saw the third seal as the history of the Hebrew nation from Abraham to Christ. Then uh, the fourth seal they thought of as the days of Jesus being here on earth and the following persecutions. They saw number five, seal number five, as the 1,260 years of apostasy and papal dominion. And then they saw seal number six as what we think of as the remnant period. And seal number seven as the last generation just when Jesus comes. Then, uh, more recently, and for probably three or four hundred years, there were other views where they said, well, you know, the seals were written in the time of the Apostle John, and so they surely started in his day, and they had good reasons for thinking that. They saw Jesus walking among the candlesticks, and they thought of him in his ministry in the holy place. So they said, let's start it with the apostolic church. Then uh, seal number two they saw as early per church persecutions, and then number three is apostasy in the early centuries, and then number four is papal persecutions for 1260 years, and then they saw number five as the martyrs crying out for vengeance from the persecutions, and uh, number six they saw as the wicked in terror at the coming of Jesus Christ, and number uh, seven as the descent of Christ from the heavens at his second coming. Well, we need to uh, consider that all of these various views, and there are many different views of the seals even today among the present theologians. And so we need to realize that it's all okay, it's all right to look at various views to see what different ones believe. <coughs> For myself, I like to look at what the inspired prophet has said about the seals. And I'm going to go to a statement that was written way back in 
1895, and it comes from, you can find it in the book Maranatha, page uh, 284, and it was written, uh, as I said, in 1895. Uh, it says, I thought of the day when the judgment of God would be, and that's future tense, poured out upon the world, when blackness and horrible darkness would clothe the heavens as sackcloth of hair. Now there she was quoting from Revelation 6.12, which has to do with the sixth seal. My imagination anticipated what it must be in that period when the Lord's mighty voice shall, and that again is future tense, give commission to his disciples. Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God, that is the seven last plagues upon the earth. Then the statement follows, Revelation 6 and 7. Now those are the two chapters that deal with the seals and who will stand, and the answer to that is in chapter 7. Revelation 6 and 7 are full of meaning. The seven angels stood before God to receive their commission, and to them were given seven trumpets. The Lord was now here, not only seals and plagues are mentioned, but also trumpets are mentioned. The Lord was going forth to punish the inhabitants of the earth, when the plagues shall come upon the earth, hail will fall upon the wicked about the weight of a talent. So here we find, through inspired words, that there are seals, plagues, and trumpets all put into a future setting. It seems very evident there that the Bible is a web of truth. In other words, there are many things in Scripture that fit together in a marvelous way so that it forms a grid it forms an immovable picture so that we can know with quite surety where we are in the scripture and in the historical events at this time so now i'm going to uh, turn to the bible itself and i want to remind you of the chart that we looked at in the previous lecture. I'm going to go to the chart and I'm going to show you why I believe that these seals uh, are having a very recent setting, one of our own day. Now, I like this chart because it is consistent. And so I'm going to walk over to the chart and I'm going to talk to you about the setting for the seals. When we looked at Revelation 4 and 5,